Hello and welcome. This is Rufa Monger, my friends. If you happen to be unaware, the Ark World Tour finals are happening right now, covering games like Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, Undernight Ember 2, and of course, Guilty Gear Strive. And I have a bit of a developer interview for you from the developers on site, and a little bit different this time around, because unlike usually when I'm reporting on other people asking the questions, this time I was asking the questions. So I got to speak to Ken Mayuchi, Akira Katano, and Daisuke Ishiwatari, the creator of Guilty Gear, on the Arc System end of things, and Kamone Serizawa representing the Undernight Ember slash Melty Blood end of things for French Bread. So for the purposes of your viewing experience, I'm gonna kind of short form everything I asked and also the answers to get to the core of it. And also cause I'm a dummy and kind of screwed up on my end and I couldn't get my webcam to work. So there's a big fat no signal on my end. So the traditional interview format wouldn't play as well anyways. Just before we get into it though, I just want to say this is like an actual true honor. Like I was super stoked. I'm still just some guy in the end, right? So getting to talk to like Titans like this was a very big deal to me. So I hope you enjoy the questions I asked and the answers that were given. So the first question I asked to the Arc System Works crew was simply why ABBA? ABBA obviously is one of many characters they could have added. So why did she get added above the rest? And the response I got was simply that they never got a chance to put ABBA into Exard. She sort of missed like a whole generation of the game. You know, she was playable in the X2 franchise and Guilty Gear Iska, right? But uh, as far as Exert goes, she was MIA. So since it's been a very long time since players last seen her, they wanted to add her as a bit of a surprise. Also adding besides that, the way she plays and how she just contributes to the overall game flow is very different than a lot of the cast. So they wanted to add her just to bring even more gameplay diversity to the overall roster of the game. Then, however, they added a dark secret that I did not know, and now you're going to find out as well. So you may recall that there was the character popularity poll, right? They did the survey, what characters would you like to see? And for the majority of the world, ABBA was either ranked as number one or number two. And for a lot of people I saw when ABBA got announced on Twitter, like, you know, they're just saying, well, this is why she was there, right? Because she won the polls. She was the head of the polls, so that's why they made her character. And that actually had absolutely nothing to do with it. The secret of ABBA, as was revealed to me by the developers themselves, is they were already working on her well before the survey results ever came in. They had no idea ABBA would be topping the charts. She was just already being worked on, right? Now that said, when the numbers came in, they were very happy ABBA was very popular. You know, good reassurance that we made the right call on the character, I guess. But the survey itself had nothing to do with it because the work was already well underway. Now that said, they do stand on the surveys. They're very glad to get the surveys and they do listen to the surveys. So don't take it that they're not listening because they are. But in this specific case, ABBA was already a done deal before the surveys were ever a thing. But once again, I'll stress just because they want the stress to me. The surveys do carry a lot of weight. So keep entering the surveys. Now, next up, because I'm a dummy and I take my very precious time talking to these people to ask stupid questions, I asked about, will Leopoldin ever return? And I want to show you the faces they made to my question. Is there ever a chance for other characters like the mighty Leopoldin to ever return? And this is Daisuke's face after the translator asks him. So, uh, you know, very reassuring. So I got a very diplomatic answer back that no character is out of the question. There are many things to consider such as development costs and demand from the community. It's something they would like to consider though. So the Leopoldin community, this is your chance. Make your voices heard. You can never count out a good gorilla whale bondage dog wizard. Next up, I asked about ABBA's new look. Obviously some new threads, but longer hair, green hair, right? So kind of changed up. And they did hear about the copper hair rumor, which they like, but uh, the fact that they called it rumor means to me that I guess is technically not canon. So the answer that was given to me is it's been uh, quite some time since the last like story edition of ABBA. So nowadays she's very much in contact with the outside world and she's really into things like fashion and beauty. She's experimenting around trying to find her own personal identity through things like changing her look, her hair and all that. So uh, once again, she's a bit of a lab experiment gone wrong, if you will. So uh, basically she's just trying to find herself and new looks is part of it. Next question I asked was about adding new moves in season three of Guilty Gear Strive. Uh, if you're unaware, many core original characters are getting all new moves, all new animations, and just kind of really changing up how things work. Like I think Potemkin's a really good example of that. 
And the answer I got on why they're doing exactly this is, well, one, just to make the characters more fun. And it's a good way to change up a character in a way that like a simple balance change, like tweaking the frame data or a hitbox on a move can't exactly accomplish. And that is also, frankly, and I can't disagree, a way to breathe new life in the characters. You see that this patch may give them a new move and then you're inspired to check them out again if you weren't already playing that character. They did state, you know, purely from a balance perspective, you know, some characters could use new things more than others. So characters that are sort of better off than, you know, the rest, uh, they're not necessarily as much of a focus, as much of a priority right now. Also going on to stress that just adding the new moves isn't there just to make the character good at something they happen to be bad at. This is an enhancement of the characters rather than just, you know, plugging holes in their existing game plan. Just because character A may be bad at XYZ, the move doesn't exist just to make them good at it. But yeah, one of the main priorities is obviously, you know, balance, right? But uh, also they just want to make the characters even cooler than they already are. So after that, I asked about the story mode. So obviously Guilty Gear Strive has a very long, very elaborate sort of visual novel style story mode, which I love by the way. And we even had as a DLC, the another story that sort of focused on Delilah and Baiken. And will there be anything else like that in the future? And uh, just to add, Daisuke was very happy I asked about the story. He was sort of beaming about it, right? Uh, but so the answer I got back is uh, um, one where they feel like uh, they're not saying everything, but not saying everything says a lot, right? So they stated, there is a lot of story elements that the fans have yet to see. Lots of characters that have yet to deliver their personal story. There is plans to tell these stories of all the different characters, but what form that will take, they cannot say just yet. So uh, sort of a non answer, but also a very big answer, also in a big way. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what they're hinting at, but uh, safe to say, given the answer, we haven't exactly seen the last of uh, the Guilty Gear characters and their wacky stories. Now, the next two questions I had to ask sort of rapid fire, I didn't expect big answers because of course I couldn't, but I feel like we got some answers in there. So the first thing was, what are the plans for Guilty Gear Strive after season three, which got a big laugh. And basically they said they cannot say anything at this time, but we may be able to find out soon. And hey, fair enough, they're not exactly gonna spill the beans at this time, right? And after that directly was, what is the future for Arc System Works? And uh, the response I got back was, it's difficult to answer at this time as uh, it's confidential. And hey, sure enough, right? Uh, so Guilty Gear and Arc System Works has grown with the community and going forward in the future, they wanna keep continuing honing their skills as a major fighting game developer and um, basically look forward to what they have in the future. Obviously, they're not going to announce their plans through me in this interview, right? But still, uh, I think it's safe to say, rest assured, there is plans for the future. They still got plenty of stuff to come. So now switching gears a bit here, that was the Arc System Works crew. I also got to speak to Kamone-san, who is at French Bread, works on Undernight in Birth 2, and also things like Melty Blood type Lumina. And here's some of the things I got to ask on that front. So asking about Undernight in Birth 2 and that it came out earlier in the year. And what were some of the big challenges in making that happen? And they said the big one was rollback implementation and we haven't played it. Uh, Uni2 has very good rollback. It's really good, try it out. Uh, but yeah, that rollback was kind of the biggest thing. Uh, stressing that, you know, Undernight in Birth is a pretty fast game. So tuning the gameplay and making sure like, especially the animations, everything worked with rollback netcode was uh, the biggest challenge they had. Obviously they had other things like the new characters, you know, balance considerations as well, but getting rollback working was the top priority. That was kind of the hardest thing they had to do, but they did get it done. Next up, I asked about Quan specifically uh, because of the new characters that were added to Undernight in Birth 2, I found Quan just the most mechanically interesting and basically asked, hey, what's the deal? And the response I got back from Komone-san is they are basically aiming to create a boss character, like a playable boss character, and have that boss character feel to them. Both in their visual flair, how they look, how they present, and also the gameplay stuff, like what they can do, especially like all the various teleports that Kwon is able to do. They purposely went out of the way to uh, go add elements of Hyde, Seth, and Batista into the character and sort of like mash them all up together. And to that, well, I say mission accomplished. The next question I got to ask is how do they feel about just the reception to Uni2 overall so far? And to that, Kamone said, 
that they anticipated some popularity in North America and they got it and they're very happy with how it's launched in North America and Japan. However, they were very surprised that the game is much more popular in Europe than they originally anticipated, which, well, frankly, makes them very happy. Uh, they state that uh, they made the game in mind with very aggressive feel and mechanics, and that overall has been uh, well received by the community as well as, you know, things like the new mechanics, like say Creeping Edge, and that the beta tests that they had before the game launched really helped them take player feedback into mind, and they feel that that really paid off in a big way. And yeah, overall, they're just quite happy with the launch of Uni 2. Now this next one here, I'm gonna try to present the answer as close to the uh, translation that was given to me, because I can tell it means a lot to Kamone specifically, and that is Melty Blood. Obviously he worked on Type Lumina and French Bread put out type Lumina, and then we had the DLC characters, and that was sort of it for the game, right? So I asked, what is next for Melty Blood? Komone-san says, I am not able to speak on type Lumina too much. I will say what I feel personally. I grew up playing Melty Blood as a student, and then still kept playing it as an adult. And then I got to work on type Lumina as an adult, making a more modern version of the game. I have a long history with Melty Blood. It is a very special place in my heart. I do not want it to end. I would love to look forward to further developments of the franchise. So yeah, no hints or anything there, but uh, just a man who really loves his Melty Blood. And the final question I got to ask was specifically just what is next for French Bread? Obviously, uh, we had Type Lumina, and now we had Undernight in Birth 2 coming out, and there's gonna be more characters, more DLC over this year and next year for Undernight in Birth 2, but you know, past that, what is next for the company? So specifically on the Undernight in Birth 2 front, obviously with the new characters, they're looking at, you know, opportunities to balance the game with new characters, see what's strong, what's weak, and just sort of tweak the game from there. And as far as the future goes, uh, stated that we're a company of fighting game lovers. We want to continue to hone our skills in the 2D realm. However, we also want to expand and explore other art styles and expressions. Please keep following along in our journey. So not saying what's next exactly, but uh, if you are unaware, you know, French Bread very famous for the 2D sprite artwork, right? And the fact that Kamone was uh, very much saying, you know, we love 2D, but we're also looking to, uh, you know, explore and expand means uh, there might be something a little bit different than what you're used to in the future. They're not saying, you know, the place to announce new stuff is not through me, at least not yet. But given the phrasing, uh, some exciting things on the future, some very different things in the future for French bread, it looks like. And that's it for the interviews. A very different kind of video for me uh, doing the interviews, you know, from my perspective. It's a very different kind of opportunity, one I'm very grateful to have. Maybe if something like this becomes more commonplace in the future, I can start taking questions from the community to ask the developers themselves. We'll see how that shapes out. But yeah, so French Bread and Arc System Works both going strong, and given the sort of non answers we're getting, I expect more fun stuff in the future as well. As the time of me posting this video, the Arc World Tour Finals is also going on right now, so make sure to check that out. And yeah, that is the interviews as it stands. So if you like my questions, if you like the answers, hey, post in the comments below. And otherwise, that is it for the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some fighting games.